Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany, this is the Brittany React Show. And on this show we talk all things movies. Today we have a lot to talk about as usual. We're catching up for all the movie news that happened over the past week, including box office news. We're gonna talk about how Dune's doing so far, how Kung Fu Panda's doing, but also how the American Society of Magical Negroes is doing. It's not doing well, spoiler alert. Plus, we have a slew of trailers to react to. There was a ton of trailers that came out this week. Uh, we have the Beetlejuice trailer. We have another Furiosa trailer. We have another uh, trailer for a bunch of different stuff. We have a Star Wars trailer. So we have, we have a lot of trailers to talk about today. Um, also, Margot Robbie is producing a live-action Sims movie? Question mark? Plus a bunch of other movies that were announced slash are in development. So we have a lot to go over. Some AI news. We do have some WTF news at the very end as well. So make sure you stick around for that. But of course, I want to say hi to you guys. How are you doing? Hi, Pretty Princess. Hi, Prototype. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Nate. Hi, Jimin. Hi, Anna Bear. Hi, Whimson. Hi, Rodney. Hi, Promoplasma. Hi, Elixi. Hi, Pol Politastic. Hi, Natanya. Hi, JC. Hi, Michael. Hi, Miss Olsen, and thank you to each and every one of you who comes to my show every day. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. I do genuinely love you guys so, so much. It's why I still do a show twice a week, just because I love talking to you, to you guys so much. So without you guys, I literally would not be showing up. Also, I have fixed Super Chats, so you guys can send Super Chats. I think when my channel got taken down, it must have turned off the ability to do super chats, so I turned it back on, so now you guys can do that. It was nothing nefarious, it was just off, so now I know why. <laughs> Fix that, so you guys can send super chats now. Um, but anyway, did anyone else see the American Society of Magical Negroes? Did anyone else see the movie because of my review or not? Um, what do you guys think about it so far? And my review did pretty well. It, it did better than I was expecting. Honestly, I was expecting, like, no one to care about that movie and that review and then it suddenly it's like one of my best performing reviews in a while so that's surprising um did anyone go see the movie what do you guys think of that film so far um hi alexander padilla hi nicholas wilson hi rocky uh prototype says i think margo liked playing non-beings having existential crises we're gonna talk about the sims movie but i do think there's a lot of similarities between the sims and barbie for sure the Movie Review Warrior says, Of course Magical Negroes is not doing well. I'm sick of every film concerning black people having to center around some sort, of, some form of racism. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I'm tired of every black film having to be about the struggle or some sort of racism issue. Like, I totally agree with you. I'm over it. I, I think it's dumb. I, I think it's tired. So yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you there. Prototype says, I don't think it's for me. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. I know, Paul Tastic. I feel like most people can't even say the name without feeling uncomfortable. It's like the, even the title of this movie is repelling people. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the box office because we are going to talk about the box office for that movie, but not yet. First, I do want to mention Dune. Dune has passed 500 million worldwide. So it's doing pretty well. It has a budget of like, I believe it was almost 200 million. So it needs to make a little bit more, but it's already made more than the first Dune. So that's good. It's doing pretty well. It's holding strong, which means it has good word of mouth. Um, I'm very happy for Dune too. It means we're definitely getting Dune Messiah. I wish this were a billion dollar franchise, but I'll take a $700 million franchise. Um, that's fine enough. As long as we keep getting good movies like these, I'm okay with that. Um, what do you guys think about how Dune is doing? I think it's very good that it's passing 500 million. I, I think it'll probably end up in the 700 million dollar range, which is why I called it a 700 million dollar franchise, which is still fine. I do wonder if Dune Messiah will do as well. I feel like Dune Messiah will probably do a little bit less, just because everything I've heard about Dune Messiah makes it seem less cinematic. Um, also, Denis Villeneuve wants to make that movie like several years later. So I don't know if people will still be waiting around, you know, rapidly waiting for the next Dune by the time he finally gets to it. He wants to make another movie first. So I don't know how well the next Dune, two, the next Dune movie is going to do. I can see it even declining a little bit from Dune 2, but I'm still happy about how well Dune 2 is doing, so I can't really complain. 
What do you guys think about Dune? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of woohoos and W's for Dune. I'm glad that you guys liked it. I know I, I know this movie had a lot of people apprehensive. I know a lot of you in my chat were like, I don't want to see Dune. I didn't like the first Dune movie. But I'm so glad that it seems like a lot of you guys gave it a chance at least. And you guys are at least happy that it's doing well. So that makes me happy. I've, I feel like I've converted a few of you into Dune fans. So I feel like I've done my job. Um, Paul, Politastic says, I'm not interested at all, but I'm not mad it's doing well. Well, that's a great way to be positive about it. Um, sorry you didn't care for it, though. I understand it's niche. It's not for everyone. Um, oh yeah, Anna Bear wants more Dune. Anna Bear, yeah, you're very happy about Dune. So happy about that. Jessica says, congrats. Natanya says, woohoo. Um, yeah, so it seems like we're all in agreement. Happy for Dune. Now... Kung Fu Panda 4 is also doing well. Crossed 200 million at the worldwide box office on a budget of just 85 million. So go ahead, go ahead, Kung Fu Panda. Very happy for it. Again, I know not everyone liked this movie, but I thought it was okay. I thought it was a cute, fun family film, so I think it's worth this money. I know not everyone in my chat apparently liked that movie. I, I was able to give a, just a brief review last week. I did tell you guys that I thought it was fun. I liked the story. I thought it was very breezy and quick, but other than that, I feel like, I don't know, there wasn't a whole lot I could really complain about. I just thought it was a fun family film. So, good for Kung Fu Panda. I like Jack Black, so I'm glad that he's got another hit under his belt. We might see another Kung Fu Panda. Maybe we'll see a fifth one. I don't know. I just hope they don't bring along Aquafina because I am so tired of her. Um, seeing a lot of congrats, yeah. The, blue, the, the movie reviews warrior says, these guys mess up when they wait like that. Make the sequel while you have the chance. Anything could happen later. Oh, you're talking about Dune? Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do about the Dune Messiah movie or when they're going to come out with it. Because I think Dune Messiah takes place in the books several years later. Like, the characters are grown up and more adult now. So I don't know what they're going to do. Are they going to recast everyone? I had it, I kind of doubt it because they cast a lot of really famous people. And I feel like whoever they would recast people as wouldn't be as famous as the current cast. So they're not going to recast. I think they're just going to wait and like maybe give them old age makeup or something. I have no idea. But yeah, it does suck that we're going to wait so long for the next Dune movie. Oh, okay, that super says Kung Fu Panda was so generic. It was kind of generic, but I thought it was fun enough that I could at least watch it. I thought it was watchable. That's how I would put it. Um, yeah, Erin, she is in too many things. Definitely agree. Um, Prototype says, I'm not going to watch because the reviews don't inspire confidence, but I'm happy it's doing well. I'm surprised more people didn't like this movie. I thought it was kind of cute, but oh well. I'll, I'll be in my island, that's fine. Now, speaking of DreamWorks, DreamWorks is planning to make significant cuts to their staff over the next few months. Uh, many departments are being cut in half, and the creative staff on movies could be reduced by as much as, if not more than, 40 to 50 percent. 40 to 50 percent! Now, this is because of AI. You can't tell me this is not because of AI. You can't tell me DreamWorks isn't planning to use AI and that's why they're planning to cut this much. I mean, 50% of their staff is significant. And DreamWorks has had some hit movies lately. Like, they had Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. This current movie, Kung Fu Panda 4, is doing pretty well. So they have movies that are doing well in theaters. So I don't think this is about money. I'm telling you, I think this is about AI. And we're going to talk about AI in a minute. We do have one piece of AI news because it is important. AI is already taking over the industry. And I'm willing to bet it's because of Sora, that open AI video model that I showed you guys. I'm willing to bet stuff like Sora is what's causing this. 50% decline for DreamWorks is huge. And I just feel bad for everyone that's working in the animation industry because I know it's got to be rough right now. Um, yeah, speaking of someone who would like to work in the animation industry one day, it's so heartbreaking to, like, feel like my chance is, is, is dwindling by the day just because AI is going to make it a lot more complicated and competitive, but we're already seeing it. I wouldn't be surprised if Disney was next, not going to lie. What do you guys think about this? Um, 
prototype says, I don't know about you guys, but I refuse to watch movies made by AI. What if they're made partially by AI? Because I don't think we're going to get a lot of full movies by AI. But like my AI news for today, I'm going to show you a movie that's already been made that used AI just for a few cutaway shots. So I, I think we're going to see movies that just utilize AI and like you use it for only a, a few quick shots or a few quick scenes, not for the entire movie. Um, Michael says, Kung Fu Panda 2 is the best one. My favorite Disney, uh, my favorite DreamWorks movie is The Prince of Egypt. Oh, yes, The Prince of, e Prince of Egypt is so good. That it, I think that's got to be everyone's favorite DreamWorks movie. That movie is so good. Um, Confused Spaggot says, if DreamWorks continues to outsource, at least use that Canadian studio that animated Captain Underpants. They are super talented. That's true. They also could be outsourcing their talent. That's very true. I just think that it's got to be at least AI partially. That's got to be the reason. And I'm going to tell you why once we get to AI news. Um, but moving on. Oh, Aaron says, I'm so conflicted because I do not consider AI as art. What if it's mixed with other human art? Do you still consider that entire piece not art? I'm very curious because I feel like these are questions we're going to have to answer for ourselves very soon. Uh, but moving on. So yes, we're finally on the American Society of Magical Negroes, and it debuted at number 9, y'all. It couldn't even debut in the top 5, it debuted in the top 10, barely. It earned just $1.25 million in its opening weekend. Not opening day, not Thursday night, the entire weekend it made only a little over a million dollars. That's so bad, y'all. I mean, look at this. These are the daily grosses for this movie. It made only about 500k on Friday, 400k on Saturday, 300k on Sunday. This is so bad, y'all. That's like a dozen people per theater. I swear. <laughs> That's nothing. This is nothing. And when I went to go see this movie, there were like maybe two other people in the entire theater. So no one's going to see this. This movie is a massive flop. As I've been saying, I think this movie just is repelling anyone who is not black. And even black people aren't really gravitating towards this movie. So I think it's just repelling everyone. Because can you imagine if you're not black and you try to go up to like the box office at the theater and you're like, can I see the magical Negro movie? <laughs> Like, I feel like most people would feel too uncomfortable to even want to ask that question. So, of course no one's going to go see it in theaters, even if they were interested, because no one wants to be like, yeah, I'm seeing that magical Negro movie. Like, why did they name it that? And then B, obviously, as we've talked about in my review, the entire content of the movie is so... I, I would use the word repulsive for anyone who is not black, because it's so judgmental. Um, so I just, I, I'm not surprised by this outcome, not even in the slightest, but it's still quite funny to see. I mean, that's like a dozen people of theater, man. This is nothing. This is nothing. That is so embarrassing. Nicholas Wilson, thank you so much for the super chat. AI is not going away. We need to live with it. Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about AI in a second, but yeah, I... I think we need to live with it, but there also needs to be rules on what we can and can't do with it. That's how I feel. But we're going to talk about it in a second. Um, yeah, Anna Bear says it's not. It's just not for you. Totally get it. Uh, Rocky Desert Flower says thought it was a rom com like the trailer shows. Well, a good bit of the movie is a romance, but that is the B plot. The A plot is more about the the society. Miss Player says, speaking of the title of this movie, I bet they'll make the, the excuse that it's actually the Spanish word for black. Well, I, I don't think so, because the movie makes it very clear the context of the word Negro is the American version, not the Spanish version. Um, the Matrix prepared us for this? What do you mean, The Matrix? Yeah, the, this movie isn't helping race relations at all. Or maybe it is. In a way, again, I feel like we're all kind of coming together to go against this movie, so maybe it is helping race relations, just not in the way that they were expecting. Uh, but anyway, I just found it quite funny, because again, this movie is also not doing well with critics. It currently has a 30% on Rotten Tomatoes, 
and I just checked before I went live. It has over 50 reviews now, and it's still at 30%. So not even like the critics are liking this movie. This is just something, and usually the critics are quite liberal. So the fact that even the critics aren't liking this movie says a lot about the content of the movie itself. It just says that this is just not, this is not a good movie. This is not a film that's going to bring people together. I have a lot of issues with it, but I've already talked about it in my review. If you want to know my thoughts, just go watch my review. Um, yes, our mutual dislike is bringing us all together on a bear. Um, <laughs> Gonzalez says this movie wants racism to not die. Sometimes I swear some people want racism to continue just so they can continue playing the victim. I feel like some people definitely want that, but we are getting way off topic. Well, speaking of politics, let's talk about it, I guess, for a little bit, or at least just for this movie, not actual politics. Because Alex Garland's Civil War is actually tracking for a pretty good opening. It's tracking to open with 21 million domestically, which would be the highest box office debut ever for an A24 movie. Now, this movie, if you guys have seen the trailer, is nuts. I, I can't wait to see this movie just to see, like, how the heck our country devolves into a civil war. I think that could be really eye-opening. I might be taking some notes. Who knows? Um, but anyway, I, I'm very excited to see it. I think it looks crazy. I think it looks bombastic. Somehow California and Texas are on the same side. I gotta see how that happened. Um, I don't know, man. I think the fact that the box office is opening so strong already, and that's just the prediction, I think this movie could really blow up and be huge for A24. That's my prediction, especially if people actually like it. So I think people are going to talk about it regardless. But if people actually like this movie, I actually think Civil War could be a really big hit. I think Civil War could do really, really well, even if it is super controversial and there will be people who probably won't like it. I think the controversy alone is probably going to make this movie a hit. Um, so I'm excited for it. I think this could be really... F well, I don't know. I don't know if fun is the right word, but I think it'll be a trip. I think it'll be an adventure. That's for sure. Anyone else looking forward to seeing the Civil War movie? Aaron is really looking forward to it. Um, Pretty Princess, never heard of it, but you're intrigued. Interesting. Yeah, the Lord of Darkness says it looks fire. Yeah. Lilika, I'm I'm so with you. I'm done with politics too. But you know what? I love politics when it's fictionalized. Like, one of my favorite TV shows is Veep. It's a political comedy about the White House, and I love Veep. Veep is so good. So I love when I watch politics, but in a fictional setting, it just makes it more entertaining for me than the depressing reality of, like, actual politics. Uh, but anyway, it's getting good reviews, actually. Alex Garland is, uh, Alex Garland's Civil War is being described as a true modern masterpiece. A riveting, unflinching, visceral, cautionary tale that's scary as hell. Um, not only is Civil War is, uh, Alex Garland's best film, it's his Apocalypse Now! A staggering journey into the dark heart of a decaying nation that examines the role of journalism, desensitization, uh, desensitization, des oh my god, the word, desensitization to violence and division, Genuinely speechless. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. These reviews are getting me hyped for this. Uh, I gotta know, again, how California and Texas end up on the same side. Apparently, they're fighting the government together. That's how they end up on the same side. So isn't this more of a revolution than a civil war? I don't know. That's why I'm gonna go see the movie. Um, but anyway, I'm still very looking side... I'm still very much looking forward to it. I'm excited. I think this could be really interesting. So I'm going to see Civil War and I'm definitely going to be reviewing it here on the channel. So make sure you subscribe for that. Um, Rodney Dollar says, this is going to be an interesting film. Maybe I'll see it. Maybe. I think we should all see it. I don't know. I can't decide if this is like a, a film we should all see as a cautionary tale or a film we should all ignore because it'll give too many people some ideas some ideas. Like, I feel like, I don't know, some people might take away some really bad ideas from this movie, considering where we're at as a country. I don't know. I'm on the fence, to be honest. Um, yeah, it is high praise to be compared to Apocalypse Now. That's why I'm, like, super pumped for this movie now. 
I haven't seen Shogun yet, the Free Rocket Man. I know I gotta try it. I know I gotta try it. Sorry, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, but anyway, now this is a, this next story is something that I know is going to resonate with a number of you. Because, apparently, two-thirds of U.S. adults prefer watching movies on streaming rather than theaters, according to a new poll. And I said that this would resonate with some of you, because I, every time I talk about a movie that you guys should see, you guys are all like, oh, I'll wait for streaming. Oh, I don't feel like seeing that in theaters. Oh, I'll just wait and go until it's on digital or something. Like, every time I'm like, you guys have to go see this movie! You're all like, oh, I'll wait for streaming. So this, I feel like two-thirds is pretty accurate. Because I feel like at least two-thirds of my own audience is like this. You guys just, doesn't even matter what the movie is. If it looks good, if you're interested or not, you're just going to wait for streaming. And I feel like that's why we're seeing the box office is so low for a lot of movies. Like, even when a movie does really well nowadays, we're kind of grading it on a curve. Because pre-pandemic... The box office still hasn't really recovered, and I don't think it's ever going to because the pandemic really conditioned a lot of people to just want to watch stuff on streaming. So now that we're getting like actual evidence from polls that adults prefer streaming to going to theaters, I think this is going to continue to affect the box office. I think it's going to affect the summer box office. I think we're going to see a lot of summer movies kind of disappoint this year, just like last year. Uh, but that's just my theory, my personal prediction, so we'll see. I'll definitely be covering the summer box office and see how it goes. Uh, but I'm not surprised by this statistic, just going based off of how you guys have talked to me about going to the movies. So, what do you guys think about this? Why do you guys think so many people prefer streaming than going to theaters? Aaron says, I still love the movie experience. I see other people that aren't respectful that I have an issue with. That's true. I do feel like, especially for younger audiences, like I told you guys when I went to go see, what was it? Um, the Freddy, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. I went to go see that and it was full of teenagers and they were talking throughout the entire movie. And I was actually sitting next to these two teenagers who were talking nonstop throughout the entire film. Nonstop. I mean, I feel, when I say nonstop, I mean like they would not come up for air. They just would not stop talking. So, yeah, I do feel like the the behavior of people in theaters is getting worse. It's like people are treating the theater as their own personal, like, living room. And I feel like that has to stop just for the experience to be better. So I'm totally with you guys there. Oh, Shelly Lee, thank you so much for the super chat. Wow, thank you again for supporting the channel. You're always so kind. This is amazing. Thank you. Uh, theater all the way. No stream subscriptions. Uh, no stream subscriptions in my house. And your super chats work now. Yes, I did fix the super chat, so you guys can do super chats now. Thank you for the super chat again. I'm glad that you like going to the theater. I love going to the theater. I go. I literally go to the theater every weekend, y'all. I go to the theater every single weekend. In fact. I'm actually going to the theater this weekend. I'm going to go see the new Ghostbusters movie. So that's going to be my Sunday review. I'm going to be reviewing the new Ghostbusters film. So if you want to see my thoughts on that, make sure you're there 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday to see my review of Ghostbusters. So yes, um, I prefer going to theaters over streaming just because I love the theatrical experience. I love being around other people, especially when it's a horror film or a comedy and you hear other people's reactions in the theater. I love that. I think it adds to the movie. Plus, I just feel like movies I see in theaters, I tend to remember more. Like if I watch a movie on streaming, I can forget that I watched the film a week later. But if I, say, if I saw that same movie in a theater, I'm likely to remember it longer. So I do feel like just a theatrical experience adds to the movie. It makes you really, like, probably take... it. You, you take away the movie a lot more than you do when you watch it on streaming. Like, it just you carry that film with you for a lot longer. Or at least it, it does for me. So I, that's why I prefer going to theaters. So I'm totally with you, Shelly. Bear, you also have a super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat, Bear. 
Um, as a millennial, going to see movies as a kid was such a thing, but it's so pricey now. I can see why people don't want to pay the high prices. Yeah, that's the other thing. It is very, very expensive to go to theaters now, especially if you have a family. If you have like three kids, that can be well over $100 now just to go see a movie. So I totally get you there. Um, I don't even know what they can do to lower the prices other than the AMC A-list, but AMC A-list can be expensive if you're paying for that for every member of the family. So yeah, going to the movies used to be like the cheap thing to do just to get out of the house. But now it's not really that anymore. Now it's like you still got to plan it. You still got to make sure you budget for it. So it's not so simple anymore. So yeah, I, I definitely get that, Otter Bear. Any other comments on this before I move on? Um, Gonzalez says the last Ghostbusters was really good. I'm hoping the new one is just as good. So far, the reviews for the new one haven't been good, so I'm a little surprised by that. Um, the movie review warrior says I used to go to used to go at least once a week, but wasn't my time with these whack films these days. Oh, you're you're not gonna waste your time. I live five minutes from a theater. Oh no! You live five minutes from a theater, yet you still don't go every week? That's bad. That's really bad. Even though you used to go every week, that's bad. Is it because you don't like the theater experience anymore? Or is it because there's just not enough movies that you care about to go to the theater for? Is that it? Is there just not enough, like, movies you guys care about? Oh my god. Sorry. You see my dog. He might go a little crazy. He has a treat. <laughs> Sorry if he takes all the attention in the background. Uh, but anyway, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here for movie theaters over streaming. <laughs> He's distracting me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm here for movie theaters 100%. <laughs> he gets crazy whenever he has a treat, so you're about to see him do his thing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, he's about to mess up my sheets, too. I just did... Oh, okay. I'm gonna fix this. Anyway. Um, let's get to the AI news now. <laughs> Prancer. Um, yeah, he's distracting everyone. He's pulling focus. Prancer, why are you pulling focus? Thank you. I appreciate it. He's such an attention whore. He always wants to be on camera. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he definitely has the zoomies. Let's get to the AI news. So, the AI news that I... <laughs> so, the AI news that I, <laughs> that I wanted to go over was that a recent indie movie actually experimented with using AI for three still images, which uh, they edited further and ultimately appeared as very brief stills in the film. So, this is a movie <laughs> that used AI. This is a movie that actually used AI. Now, it's only three still images, but still the fact that they used AI. <laughs> He's trying to bury it now. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. He's completely taken all focus. What are you doing? Oh, oh my god. Um, anyway. <laughs> so this is, this has a lot of people very upset, very angry. Um, thank you. He's, he's, he's out now. Okay. Now I think we can all focus. So, um, <laughs> sorry about that. This movie used three AI images, like as stills, just as cutaway references, or I guess cutaway images, and people are already upset with this. Like, they are just absolutely in, enraged by this. There are people even saying that they want to boycott this movie just because they used three stills. Three stills, that's it. And like I've been so I've been showing you guys, AI video is coming along pretty quickly. So soon enough, these studios are going to be using video as well, not just images. And I feel like, as who was it that said that AI is here? Was it Nicholas? Nicholas Wilson, as you said, AI is here, and I feel like we need to learn how to use it 
for our benefit so that we don't get bulldozed by it. I think instead of fearing it and wanting to boycott anything that uses AI, we need to start making like rules and regulations for how we should be using AI and how much versus how little. I think the ship has sailed on whether or not AI is going to be used at all because it already is. I think we all just kind of need to like get used to it and just set rules. That's kind of how I feel about this. I don't think that we should be boycotting an entire movie for three still images, but there are people who are literally saying that. And I think that's taking things just a bit too far in my opinion. Ronnie Dollar says AI is horrifying. Yeah, I know. Um, that super says we'll have one person studio soon with AI. I don't know if it'll be just one person, but I can definitely see in the very near future we'll have a bunch of independent studios that have like five to ten people on them and they can make and churn out whole movies. I can totally see that. Um, Professor Strangefinger says, will theaters ever be packed again like the good old days? Well, they were packed during Barbenheimer. They were packed during the Spider-Man movie. So they can be packed. It just, it's got to be for a movie that everyone actually wants to see. Red Banana Green says, AI is already being used to tweak people's faces in videos. Is that true? I know stars use CGI and visual effects to, like, give them, you know, nice aesthetics. It's called um, CGI makeup. But I can totally see them using AI to, like, make, it, make themselves look younger, too. I can totally see that. Um, Tyler Perry, Denisha, Tyler Perry was going to expand his studio in Atlanta. It was going to be a, a billion dollar expansion, but he turned down that expansion because he saw OpenAI's Sora model and it convinced him that the future of the industry was AI and that a studio probably wasn't going to be needed. That's what happened with Tyler Perry. So that's how it's already affecting the industry. Yeah, Miss Olsen, I agree. We need to learn how to work with AI, not to be afraid of it or boycott it. I think it's here to stay. We just got to learn how to deal with it. Um, Primal Plasma says, a lot of people were in theaters when I went to see Madam Web. Really? Madam Web? Of all movies, Madam Web? Hey, at least the theater was full. At least the theater was full. But anyway, I just had to share that because I think it's fascinating that AI is already being used in movies, like actual movies that are going to theaters. So that's interesting to me. Um, I will be updating you guys more with this kind of stuff. So moving on, we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> so like, now that my dog is out of the picture, we can actually chat and not be distracted. Or at least I was distracted. I don't know about you guys, but when he gets the zoomies, I get so distracted. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. So, X-Men 97. I watched the first two episodes, and I have to say, it is pretty good. I really like it a lot. Now, I have no prior background or experience with this show. I did not watch this show in the 90s. I did not. I think this was possibly slightly before my time. I did not watch this show, so I have no nostalgia for it at all. But, I have to say, I thought the first two episodes were pretty good. I thought the first episodes were strong. I really like... the My exposure to the X-Men is through the Fox X-Men movies. I love the Fox X-Men movie. X-Men movies. Those are the movies that I grew up on. That's why I'm a huge X-Men fan, because I love those movies so much. And so, one of my favorite things that I love about the Fox X-Men movies is seeing their camaraderie and how the X-Men have banter with each other and interact with each other and how their powers, like, bounce off of each other. And I love seeing that in this show. I love seeing how all of these, all of the X-Men interact. I love seeing new X-Men that I haven't seen before in the, the Fox X-Men movie uh, or any of the movies. So I'm being introduced to a few new characters, which is nice. I love the voice acting. I think they got some really great talent for the voice acting. And it's not just a bunch of celebrities, they're actual voice actors, so they're trained for this. I think the animation is slick, super nostalgic. I can tell if I watched the original series that I probably would be super nostalgic watching this because they make it look like an old school 90s animated series and it, I think it's cool. I think it looks better for that reason. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of modern western animation on how it looks, so I'm kind of glad that they went old school with the 90s style. I think this works for it better. Um, overall, 
I really like this show so far, and I, I can understand why it's getting such good reviews. Has anyone seen any of these episodes? They just released the first two episodes. Has anyone seen X-Men 97, and what do you guys think of the show? Uh, bring back Prancer. <laughs> he completely destroyed my bed! I made my bed so nice! Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. You yeah, have to see my completely disheveled bed now. I apologize. Maybe I can move it a little bit. I don't know. When he gets the zoomings, he completely messes up my bed. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Uh, Miss Olsen is not interested. Okay. Miss Player says, I never cared for the old X-Men show. My X-Men show was the 2000s show in the live action movies. Okay, okay. Seems like not a lot of you watched the old series. Uh, Michael says, you have to watch X-Men, the animated series. It's really good. One of my favorite episodes has to do with Wolverine and Nightcrawler talking about religion. It's really thought-provoking. You know what? One of the things I really liked about this show was that, you know what? The X-Men were woke before woke was a thing. Because they're supposed to be a metaphor for, like, the people who typically get, um sort of pushed aside in society or looked over or judged just for being different. And that could be a, a whole num number of things. It could be related to race. It could be a metaphor for being gay. But there's supposed to be a metaphor for being, like, a minority in society that gets hated on. So the fact that they actually delved deep into that and, like, they weren't afraid from touching on those subjects, to, to me, was really nice and positive, And I, I actually really liked that element of the show. Um, Closeted Opinions, thank you so much for the super chat, really appreciate it. I think the new X-Men 97 is decent. My issue was that the animation seemed out of focus at times, and it took me out of it from two, uh, from time to time. The action is good. Sorry. Well, I'm glad that you like the action, at least some of it. I do think the animation is really good, so I have to disagree with you there. But, uh, I, I don't know, I just, I haven't seen the original series, so I'm not comparing it to the original series, I'm just comparing it to what I've seen from other animated shows, and I really like the animation. Um, I think it looks slick, I think it looks very graphic, it looks like these characters just popped right out of a, a comic book. So I really liked the animation, but I'm sorry it wasn't for you, it seems. Um, seems like most of you are not interested, period, though. To those who aren't interested in the series, is it because you're not interested in X-Men, or is it because you you haven't seen the original show that this is based on? Anna Bear says, I loved the original show as a kid. Haven't seen this yet, but I'll check it out since you said it was good. If you like the original show, I, I imagine you'll like this a lot, too. It seems like it probably has the same vibe. Oh no, the Lord of Darkness disagrees! Oh no, you don't like it? Why not? I thought it was pretty good. Um, Jessica H says, I love the old series. I only never, I only ever seen the first movie out of fear for my love for the series. Yeah, the series is pretty good so far. I don't know. I, maybe it's not for everyone, but I think this is a pretty solid start so far. I actually think this might be the best Marvel series since WandaVision. That's how much I'm liking it so far. So I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So, and one of the things that I'm really liking about the animation is the fact that it's mostly hand-drawn. They said we take, uh, we do take advantage of CG for layout or overly complicated vehicles or ships, but then you still have to go in and hand-draw all of that. So, that's one of the reasons why I think I'm really vibing with the animation is because it's hand-drawn. Maybe some of the out-of-focus stuff that you guys are seeing is just the fact that it's hand-drawn, so maybe there's like some slight imperfections. Sorry. But when's the last time we got a hand-drawn series like this? Usually all animation is done computer, like with a computer, like completely di like digital. So the fact that majority of this animation was hand-drawn is what makes me really, really like this show. Like a lot. I think visually it's great. It does look beautiful, yeah. Oh, okay. The Free Rocket Man says, but the movements don't look fluid. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe I'll watch again for the third episode and see what you guys are seeing with the animation, but I was really happy with the animation. You know what I don't like? What animation I don't like? The what if stuff. The the if, you know, the animated series for Marvel where they go over what if something happened instead. 
I don't like the animation style for that at all. I think it looks weird and jarring. This is the kind of animation style that I much, much prefer. So in my opinion, this looks better than the What If series that Disney also does. Uh, but anyway, moving on to the next topic. So we did get a new trailer for Beetlejuice, starring Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, and Jenna Ortega. Now, it's just a teaser, so there's not really a whole lot in it. It's basically just a bunch of references from the original movie. Um, you see the original school, the town, you see Jenna Ortega riding her bike through the place. Doesn't this look like the same barn or whatever from the It movie? Um, this looks like the same setting from It, but anyway. I feel like all these 80s inspired movies are starting to blend together, but that's just me. Uh, we see a bit of Winona Ryder, who apparently is still rocking the same haircut even as an adult. Uh, we see um, uh, Catherine O'Hara, who I love. I'm glad that she's in this movie. Uh, when, uh, they're mostly focusing on Jenna Ortega, which makes sense because she's a really big star right now. So she goes into this attic. She lifts up the... the this is the same attic, I think, from the original movie. And she opens up... She, you know, she dusts off the whole uh, mock set for the town that they have in the attic. I believe, again, this is all from the same, this is the same, like, miniature set and everything from the first movie. And this is where she sees Beetlejuice yet again. He appears, his ghostly self, and he's like, hi, how are you doing? The juice is back. And then that's the end of the trailer. So a cut to Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And I have to say, I think Michael Keaton looks pretty cool. I, I think he looks old. But I think for an old Beetlejuice, he looks pretty cool. I think Jenna Ortega looks great. I like Winona Ryder in this. Now, I do think that this trailer was just reference after reference after reference. And I do think it's probably just going to be a bunch of member berries. But I do think this movie could be a hit just because I think the original Beast Beetlejuice is still beloved. And I think it's still in the cultural consciousness a bit, just like Wednesday was. So I think this movie could be a big hit. But I do think that this movie might not be good. <laughs> I think it'll be a hit, but I'm not sure how good it'll be. Just because the trailer makes it seem like it's just going to be a bunch of nostalgia bait. And I don't know if anyone who hasn't seen the original Beetlejuice or maybe didn't watch that movie as a kid is going to get the same enjoyment out of it. So I'm not sure. Um, I think it looks decent. I think it looks all right. But I also think it looks like it's full of nostalgia bait. So we'll see. What do you guys think about this? Do you, did you like the teaser? Do you think it's a good teaser? Are you excited for this movie? Um, Confused Spaghetti says, It's Tim Burton again, and I've heard that they use a lot of practical effects like the OG. If that's true, I expect some sweet visual segments. That's true. They did say that they use a lot of stop motion. Tim Burton says he's using stop motion animation to bring back classic effects into Beetlejuice 2. It needed to a back-to-basics handmade quality. It re-engineered why I love making movies. So you're right. They're not using a lot of CGI in this. They're using stop motion like they did in the original. I think we're in the middle of a, seeing a huge movement right now in Hollywood in general. Where we're seeing this sort of movement away from doing everything super CGI all the time. In fact, even Star Wars is moving away from that, as you will see in a minute. And I'm really happy about that. Like, we got the uh, the, the new X-Men series that's entirely hand-drawn. And then you have this new Beetlejuice movie that uses stop-motion animation and not a lot of CGI. I want to say that Barbie may have really got the ball rolling on that because everyone knows that they actually built that Barbie village. I feel like they're going to... I feel like a lot of people are having a negative reaction to, to seeing a lot of CGI now. Like, think of The Flash, for example. A lot of people didn't like The Flash because they didn't like the CGI in it. So I think what studios might be doing now is, like, maybe going back to doing some things practical, which would make me very happy because I love it when they do things practical. So I'm hoping, maybe this is just wishful thinking, but I really am seeing some evidence here. This is one of the examples that I really think that we're seeing a movement away from just doing everything CGI and like actually starting to do some things practical again. At least that's what I'm hoping because that's what we're seeing from these new movies so far. So that's great. Uh, Monglewood, thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Have you seen the new Alien trailer? Yes, we're going to talk about the new Alien trailer in a minute. 
Uh, we have a lot of trailers to talk about. There's so many trailers that dropped this week. Trust me, we will get to the Alien trailer. Uh, but thank you so much for the super chat. I know Tim Burton has always been a fan of stop motion. I feel like without Tim Burton, stop motion might have died a long time ago. Like, I feel like that man... Both Tim Burton and Leica Studios are single-handedly keeping alive the stop-motion genre. <laughs> Without them, I don't think stop-motion would still be alive right now. It'd be completely dead. Um, Denisha says, CGI has a bad rep, and knowing that the different shots of the old Star Wars movies was painted and they build props. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I think we're starting to see Hollywood listen to the audience a bit, and they're starting to go back to using more hand practical stuff and I think that's so positive and such a good positive movement that I'm seeing that I'm really happy about it at least that's what I'm hoping I'm seeing and it's not just like a, a, like a few movies that are doing it I really think it's starting to be a trend uh, but anyway we have some more looks I mean I think General Ortega looks pretty good I mean it's just a simple outfit I think it's so funny that Winona Ryder's character has the same haircut the same pretty much hairstyle, the same bangs since she was a kid. She did not change her hairstyle at all. I always find it really funny when characters do that, like to show a character is the same person even when they've aged. They always have like the same haircut. <laughs> I just think that's so funny to me because it's like that's so unrealistic. Usually you would change your hair as you know throughout time. So it's just so funny she has like pretty much the same hair as before. Uh, but anyway. I'm still looking forward to it. I think it looks good. I think Michael Keaton looks really good as Beetlejuice again. So I'm looking forward to the movie. I think it looks great. So moving on to the next trailer. House of the Dragon is finally coming back. You guys know I love me some House of the Dragon. Love me some House of the Dragon bad. I thought the first season was a delightful surprise. You know, after the first or not the first, the last season of Game of Thrones. I wasn't sure what this first season was going to be. I wasn't sure if it was going to be good, if it was going to be really bad, like the last season of Game of Thrones, but I was so pleasantly surprised. I was so enraptured. I was like there Sunday every night just waiting for this episode. Like I was there as soon as it dropped. I would not wait and I'm probably going to be that same way again. So I'm definitely going to be covering this show. Um, so if you guys want to see like separate uh live streams where we break down each episode please let me know because i'm definitely going to be watching this show i love it so much we got two trailers we got a team black and we got a team green trailer so we have a team black trailer for renera and we have a team green trailer for allison because that's what this whole season's about it's going to be about renera and allison fighting over who's going to take over the throne now that her father died um, and I'm very, very curious because if you guys remember, Allison was told by, um, what's his name, Renera's father, that he wanted Aegon to take over the throne. But he didn't mention which Aegon because they have a million Aegons in this show. So she thinks that her son should be on the throne and that was the, the dude's final wishes. But Renera knows the truth. Renera knows that her father actually wanted her on the throne not Aegon. So now we have Allison versus Rhaenyra, and I think this show looks super, super good. I love, again, the settings and the costumes always look great, look very Game of Thrones. Looks, I love the dragons. They look even more real this season than the last season. Um, super, super looking forward to House of the Dragon. What do you guys think of this show? Um, you guys want me to talk about Shogun? I'm going to see Shogun, okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I will wa I will talk about Shogun, okay? I will, I will watch Shogun for you guys, and I'll talk about it next week, okay? How about that? I promise that. I'll watch the first episode of Shogun, and then I'll talk about it on the next news show. How about that? Because you guys really want me to watch this show. And now Prancer has completely stolen the show again. Why are you always stealing the attention, Prancer, huh? He loves the camera, I'm convinced. Um, Brianna says, Personally, don't care for the Game of Thrones series or House of the Dragon. I keep forgetting you guys do not care for Game of Thrones, which is crazy because it's so popular. You guys should really watch this show. It's so good. If you guys like anything fantasy, anything really 
sophisticated with some gravitas. Watch House of the Dragon and Game of Thrones. They're really good shows for a reason. Um, oh, Rodney Dollar is not interested. Interesting. Well, I'm looking forward to this show. Now, we have a new trailer for Furiosa. Like I said, we have so many trailers from this week. This is starring Anna Taylor-Joy as the new Furiosa. So basically the new uh, Charlie's Theron. And I think this looks pretty good. This is a prequel to what, um, I guess, her life was like before she met Mad Max. So I'm very curious to see what we see about Furiosa. I love the visuals. I love freaking Chris Hemsworth. I think he looks absolutely crazy. He doesn't look like himself at all. And he sounds different, too. Like, he's putting on a voice, which I really like. It looks pretty... Honestly, it looks more digital than the the last Mad Max movie. The last Mad Max movie, they actually filmed in the desert and did everything practical, and it looked that way. This one does look a lot more digital than the original, not the original, the last one. Um, so that makes me kind of upset, but I also remember them saying that it was super difficult to film that movie, so maybe that's why they didn't do everything practical this time. Because um, even now, you can kind of see this looks more digital than the last movie, but... It still looks cool, so I'm excited for it. Uh, I think Ani Taylor-Joy looks super badass in this trailer. I think she looks super cool. I think this could be like a really star-breaking-out moment for her for movies. Uh, but anyway, I'm looking forward to it. I think it looks dope. We even got this guy again. I don't even know is this guy's name, but I just know that he looks cool, and it's kind of weird. Lots of great action. Looks dope. Um, Chris Hemsworth looks super funny and weird. Anya Taylor-Joy looks cool. I, there's really nothing that I can say bad about this. I'm super pumped for Furiosa. What do you guys think about this? Do you think it looks like too much CGI compared to the last Mad Max? Or do you think it still looks pretty good? Oh no, Professor Strangefinger, you're not feeling Furiosa yet either? Okay, Rio Rose says this looks interesting. Okay, Anna Bear is excited. Um... Yes, George Miller is a very old man. I'm really, really happy that he was able to make this movie um, because some people were like, how is he going to be able to make this movie at his age? But he was able to do it, so good for him. Um, Joe Pedro says, I think the only love, I, the only live action series I've probably seen is Doctor Who and only until the 11th Doctor. Do you not watch a lot of live action series? That's interesting. Do you watch a lot of animated stuff? Um, he's sending a message to me that he wants to play. That's his universal sign of play with me, pick up my toy, I want to play. <laughs> and he's moping because I'm not playing with him. That's what's happening behind me right now. So I apologize if you see my dog moping in the background because I'm not picking up his toy. Um, he's really taking over the stream today, just entirely. Um, yeah, I do love animation, rock, paper, scissors. For sure. Anyway, moving on. Another trailer we got was a second trailer for The Fall Guy, starring Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. Now, I really like these two actors. I really like them a lot. I love them in pretty much everything I've seen them in. If you, ha if you guys haven't heard of The Fall Guy, it's a rom-com about a stunt double that is Ryan Gosling, who has a crush on Emily Blunt, who's a director. Um, and according to the trailer... The, the guy that Ryan, Goblin, Ryan Gosling is doubling for, the actor, the, the fictional actor, is missing. So they have to find this fictional actor. Um, but they're going to do, do it through a lot of stunts, I'm assuming, because it's about a stunt guy. I don't know. It just looks really interesting to me. I think it looks funny. It looks like there's going to be a lot of charming, funny scenes, but also a lot of action. So maybe it's something there for everyone. Um... I love, again, I love these two actors, so I think this looks pretty good. What do you guys think about The Fall Guy? Do you think you'll be seeing this one too? Does this look interesting to you or sound interesting to you? Um, it's an original, it's an original story, so it's not based off of anything. Which you guys know I love. I love me a good original story. So I'm going to see this just for the fact that it's original. What do you guys think about The Fall Guy? Um, okay. Folklore thinks it sounds cool. Um, the Lord of Darkness thinks it looks great. I know, I called him Ryan Goblin. I was hoping no one would pick that up. Thank you, Red Banana Green. Oh, no, it was Five Fruit. Thank you, Five Fruit. 
Um, sounds interesting, sounds fun. Yeah. Oh, there was a TV show? I didn't know that. Well, I think it looks interesting. I think for rom-coms, this looks like a lot of fun, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, that is the Fall Guy. And we have a trailer for Alien Romulus! Now we're finally at Alien. So, I think this trailer just completely changed my mind on this movie entirely. I wasn't interested in this film at all, just because I know there's been a lot of Alien movies and not a lot of them have been good since the first one, or the second. So, oh my gosh, Prancer, I cannot play with you. I cannot play with you. I'm sorry. He is literally, I don't know if you guys can hear him, but he's like literally whining in my ear because he wants to play that badly. Um, like I said, he completely took over the entire stream today. Thank you, Prancer. Um, but anyway, yes, I said Ryan Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back to Alien Romulus. So, this trailer actually completely changed my mind on this movie. Beforehand, I had no interest in it at all because the cast made it seem like they were going to do some modern reboot of it where they were going to have a bunch of young actors who just weren't going to fit in the world of aliens at all. So, the fact that this trailer actually looks very spooky, it looks like a horror film in space like the original, I think says a lot. Um, and this actually changed my mind. This actually looks really good and like something I might actually really enjoy watching. It looks serious. It doesn't look silly. It looks like there's, you know, a vision behind it. Um, I don't know, man. That's, this looks a lot better than I was expecting, not gonna lie. What do you guys think about the new Alien Romulus trailer? It looks very intense. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. It looks intense. And that wasn't the vibe I was getting from the cast, so I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised to be wrong. Uh, okay, Susanna's not interested. Interesting. Rodney Dollar says, I think this franchise like Terminator ender ended with the first two. Yeah, I agree. I, I think all of these extra movies is just nonsense. I think we all can agree that the first two movies are the only ones that are actually canon. Um, that's kind of how I feel this way about Alien 2. I feel the same way as the Terminator franchise where I'm just like, why do we keep dra dragging this out? This should have ended like several movies ago, in my opinion, but at least this looks decent. Okay, Rabbit Green thinks this looks like a rehash with the CW cast. Well, that's savage. That's super savage. Um, Sigourney Weaver is not in this, no. It's an entirely new cast, and they're all young. I have not seen Don't Breathe or Evil Dead. I don't watch a lot of horror movies, unfortunately. I just, I'm not interested in them. Um... First two good movies, rest, popcorn schlock, yeah. This looks like this could be good popcorn schlock, though. Like, not entirely bad, but, like, maybe not entirely good either. But, like, it looks like it's at least watchable. I don't know. I, I think this could be decent. I think the trailer's pretty good, at least. Um, Rodney Dollar says, I mean, Terminator Dark Fate officially killed the franchise. Blame James Cameron for that. Well, James Cameron apparently said that he thinks this movie's good, too. So, I don't really trust... James Cameron's opinions on films that he didn't direct because he always says oh yeah this movie's great and then it's terrible but when he directs the film then I believe it's great because he's a great director but when he's just commenting on another film he didn't make I tend to ignore him because he'll just say that about anything uh, but anyway and that's saying I'm saying that as someone who I love James Cameron James Cameron's probably one of my favorite directors working today so I'm saying this as a James Cameron lover I don't listen to his opinions on movies unless he directed them himself, because he'll say he'll love anything. Truly. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so we also got a trailer for a game today. This is for Captain America and Black Widow, not Black Widow, Black Panther, and it's set in World War II. It's called Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra, and it releases next year. Now, the visuals on this are insane, like actually insane. It, they look so real, like hyper real. And the setting looks super cool. The fact that it's in World War II time. Love that we're seeing some more Captain America. Love me some Captain America. Here's a quick video of Black Panther and how crazy the audio, not the audio, the video looks like. Look at how real that is. That looks like so freaking real, but it's not. It's a video game. 
I don't know, man. This looks super dope. I think it's cool trying to team up Captain America and Black Panther together, especially putting it in a World War II setting. I think that makes it even more exciting. The visuals look so freaking real. I don't know, man. This looks exciting to me. Anyone else planning to play this game, maybe? I think the game looks pretty good. Um, it looks weird? Okay. I think it looks pretty nice. Yeah, Primal Plasma agrees. Um, Rock, Paper, Scissors agrees. Brianna Does Art says, This is why video games cost $300 million to make. Is this what, how much this, this game costs? I have no idea how much this game costs, but look at how real this looks. I mean, this looks super, super real to me. I mean, bravo to whoever did the, the CGI on this, because, wow, looks incredible. Anyone interested in this game? Okay. Brooks Movie Reasons is interested. That's good. Depends on how much it costs. That's the true question. Hi, Sam. That is the true question. Okay, a lot of people would play it. I think I would play this, too. I'm quite interested, so... I might play this when it gets released. We'll see. Moving on to the next thing. Okay, so now we're talking about Star Wars. So Star Wars released a new trailer for a new Disney Plus series called The Acolyte. Now, The Acolyte is about... It follows an investigation into a crime spree that pits a respected Jedi Master, played by Lee Jung-jae, against a dangerous warrior from his past, played by Amandala Stenberg. As clues emerge, they travel down a dark path where sinister forces reveal all is not what it seems. So that's the plot. It's another Disney Plus Star Wars series, so they vary in how good they are, so I have no idea if this is actually going to be good or not. But what I do like about this is that they're not overusing the volume. They're actually using a lot of real sets for this, which makes me super happy. Close your eyes. As you can see in this trailer... There are, it looks a lot more tangible and real for a lot of these scenes. Um, and that's because they're not overusing the volume, which is very nice. It seems like, again, they're actually listening to people and our feedback on these shows because a major critique a lot of people have had for a lot of these shows has been the fact that they are over-relying on the volume. So again, this is another example of what I'm talking about when I say I think there's a, a concerted effort within Hollywood right now to really move away from over-reliance on CGI. And I think that is such a positive development that I'm super happy about. Like, it's probably one of the best developments that's happened recently in Hollywood in a while. Like, I'm that happy about it. But anyway, I think the show itself looks decent. I think the trailer is a bit boring, not gonna lie. I don't think the trailer really does much to get me excited. Um, but I'm not, again, a huge Star Wars fan. I do think Amanda kind of looks cool. This is her, her look. She's kind of got, like, these weird, I don't know, beaded dreads sort of thing? I don't know. Very interesting hair. Not sure how I feel about that. But it looks decent. We've got, like, a Jedi Wookiee. So, they're introducing new concepts, which is nice. A nice Jedi Wookiee. Um... The sets look great. The action looks like it might actually be decent. I don't know, man. This looks like a Star Wars series that might actually be kind of okay. So I, I don't know. I'm cautiously optimistic. I can't be super optimistic because most of these Star Wars shows, I think, have been awful. Um, so I'm going to say I'm, I'm just cautiously optimistic. I'm hoping, just hoping, that this show can actually be good. What do you guys think? Um, the Booby Review Warrior says, I doubt the Acolyte is going to be worth the hill of beans. If it's good, I'll be shocked. Yeah, yeah. It's already getting a lot of controversy. I mean, apparently, uh, the, the trailer did get 51.3 million views in the first 24 hours, which is really positive. Uh, that makes it the most watched trailer debut for any Star Wars series. But the reason why I don't think that's entirely good is that I don't think a lot of that was positive watching. I think a lot of that was hate-watching, because unfortunately, the Acolyte trailer currently has more dislikes than likes on YouTube, with over 160,000 dislikes. So, I think a lot of people might just end up hate-watching this show if they watch it at all, because clearly the Star Wars fan base is not in a healthy place, and they really hate just, like, everything that Disney puts out Star Wars related. So, I, that's what I... I tweeted that the show is probably going to be dead on arrival, even though it has a lot of trailer views, and 51 million views is a lot of trailer views. 
trailer views doesn't necessarily always equate to how well something actually does. And I, I do think a lot of it was just hate watching because the the down votes basically say so. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure how well this show is going to do. I do like that they're not over reusing the, the volume for the visual effects. That is great. It does look visually a lot better than a lot of the other Disney Plus shows, so that's good. Um, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. Who is interested in the Acolyte and who is not? Okay, the Lord of Darkness loved Andor. Maybe this will be more like Andor. I'm not sure. Okay, Shelly Lee says, what is hate watching? Hate watching is when you watch something that you don't like on purpose so that you can hate on it on the internet afterwards. Like, for example, a lot of people hate watched She-Hulk. A lot of people hate watched the, the Rings of Power. These are shows that not a lot of people liked, but people watched anyway so that they could be informed and have hate discussions with people after the show. That's what hate watching is. I feel like a lot of people are going to do that with this show just because it is a diverse cast. And I feel like Disney might be hiding behind a diverse cast again. And that's going to be an issue. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think it's going to be another, another one of those controversial shows. But we'll see. Maybe it'll be so good that it can't be controversial. It's going to have to be that good, to be honest. Yes, Velma. Thank you, Natanya. That's another good example. Velma. We hate watched Velma, remember? That's an example of hate watching. Um, Bite Bard says, I think this one has potential. I'm nervous, but I do want to like it. Okay, okay. If you're a Star Wars fan, I totally get you want something positive. You want to like something, so... I hope this this show is good for you. I just don't have a lot of faith because most of these Star Wars shows haven't been that great. So we'll see. We'll see. I do think it's at least interesting that it has people's interest because I would have thought that this show would not, would be too niche to draw this kind of interest, which is why I think a lot of it is hate watching um, because it is very very niche. Uh, but maybe we'll see. Who I, I highly doubt 51 million people are going to watch this show, but we'll see. Miss Player says, at least all the stuff I love didn't go down as bad as Star Wars or try to be trendy with modern audience. Yeah, the, the modern state of Star Wars is so bad. Like, truly, the modern state of Star Wars is just pitiful. It's, it's full of a bunch of fans that don't even like what Disney is doing. And it's just full of a lot of toxicity and hate right now. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, but anyway, moving on from Star Wars... No, wait, one more thing before I move on from Star Wars, because if you're ever thinking of maybe they're going to do a Lando movie or a Lando series, well, Billy D. Williams did say he would return. He said, if they paid me a lot, I'd sell my soul. <laughs> I had to include this because I was like, wow, I know some actors mean it. I mean, feel that way, but they don't say it. But man, is he actually just saying it. He's like, if they paid me enough, I'd sell my soul. So... Maybe we'll get him to return in something because apparently he's willing to do it. I don't know. I just found this quote to be kind of funny. That's why I included it. Uh, but anyway, moving on. So uh, apparently at Marvel, a Nova project is in the early works. And I have no idea who Nova is because I don't read the comics. So all I can say is... From a business perspective, I think that we need to be focusing on more popular characters, more household name characters that people like me who don't know the comics would know. I feel like them doing more Disney Plus series that focus on niche characters or characters that only people who read the comics would know, I feel like that is not something that they should be doing right now. I feel like they should be focusing on just their core, most popular characters because this universe is already super crowded. And the most popular characters, um, sorry, my dog, um, and the most popular characters in the Marvel Universe right now are having to sc share screen time with a bunch of really unpopular characters. So a Nova project, all I'm thinking is, oh wow, this is another project, which means this takes the place of something else that I would rather be watching instead. <laughs> because with more projects, with just means that we're going to have to wait longer to get to projects we do care about. And maybe if you've read the comics, maybe you're like, Brittany, this is blasphemy. Nova's great because of X, Y, Z. And I'm just telling you, as someone who does not read, read the comics or care, 
I don't know who Nova is, and I don't care to watch something about him. <laughs> not when I still want to get to the X-Men. Not when I want to get to Fantastic Four. Not when I'm still waiting for my Wanda Solo movie. Okay, these are the things that I care about way, 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 way more than whatever the heck Nova is. So that's just my opinion from someone who doesn't read the comics, but it's just looking at this from a business perspective. I think they need to just focus on, like, the most popular characters that they already have in the X-Men, not introducing random new characters from the comics. That is my opinion. Um, who the heck is Nova? I have no idea. I have no idea. Prima Plasma says Nova is a boring character. He needs to be in an ensemble. Yeah, maybe we'll see him in an ensemble. Like, I wouldn't mind if they introduced him that way, but giving him his own project just seems like, why are we focusing on random stuff we don't really need right now? Um, nice bod, though. <laughs> I guess it kind of is. I don't know. It's a little bit too much. Um, just bring back Scarlet Witch, right? I just want something Scarlet Witch, man. That's all I want. Does this mean I have to wait longer for a Scarlet Witch project because they're doing something with Nova now? I don't know, man. I just feel like the MCU is way too crowded at the moment. That's how I feel about it. Now, The Sims! The Sims! Margot Robbie is set to produce a live-action Sims movie with director Kate Herron um, set to direct. And if you don't know who Kate Herron is, she directed, I believe, the first season of Loki. So if you've seen Loki, you know her work. And I, I like the first season of Loki. It's not my favorite Disney Plus series, but I do think it's well-written, and it's one of Disney's better series. So I do think she's a good director. This also makes me feel like Margot Robbie must watch Grace Randolph. Because <laughs> Grace Randolph has been going off on how much she loves Kate Heron. And this just sounds like, a pro like something that she would pitch or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I just find this kind of funny. Because I have also been saying for a while, haven't I been telling you guys for ages that a Sims movie should be made? Haven't I been saying out of all of the games that are getting turned into movies and shows right now that a Sims movie should be made? I, I think a Sims movie makes so much sense, and let me tell you why. So imagine a Sims movie, right? Where it starts off with everyone in a simulation. Um, and no one knows that they're in a simulation, though. And then suddenly they start to see little things around them that are going wrong. Like maybe they're in a pool and their ladder gets taken away. Or maybe um, maybe a door gets taken away or a window. Or maybe there's a plate on the floor and they can't get around it. I don't know. I, I'm someone who has played The Sims a lot. So I know all the little Sims gags and inside jokes. Um, I want the plumb bob. I want a plumb bob o over whoever the main character is. I want the characters to play to speak simlish. I want the whole thing. If you're gonna do sims, you gotta do the whole sims. You gotta do sims the, the whole way. That's I love the sims. A lot of people love the sims. It has a huge fan base, so this movie has to do it right, uh, because there will be a fan base that will be upset if they don't do it right. Um, but I'm very excited. So far, Margaret Rob Robbie is just set to produce. It's not saying that she's starring in it yet, but I have a feeling she's probably gonna star in it. Um, now, I do feel like this movie is very similar to Barbie. Because Barbie also had to deal with a, a fake simulated world where the characters were, weren't really real humans. And they also had to wake up and kind of realize that their world wasn't real. I feel like that could be the similar plot for The Sims. But I still think The Sims could work. I would be really interested in a Sims movie. Sorry. Especially um, if Margot Robbie was starring in it. So I'm really interested in this. I think this looks super good. Um, the baby on fire. Yes, we need the baby on fire. I want all the little weird quirks and everything, you know? I want all of this to work. I want the, I want a, a, a sim to get lost in a pool or get stuck in a building that I can't get out or something like that. I just want all the weird things that you could do to sims to be in this movie because I feel like that is what the sims, that's what sims fans would actually want from this film is all of the little inside jokes and things that we do to our sims. So that's what I hope that this movie is about. It could almost be a horror movie in a way. There's a way to make this a horror movie too. Yeah, similar to Free Guy. Similar to Free Guy in a way. I can see that, yeah. Um, 
Rodney Dollar says Barbie was fighting the patriotic and now Sims as well. Um, oh, the patriarchy, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she's going to be fighting the patriarchy in this movie. I don't think that's really necessary. <laughs> I have played The Sims. I love The Sims. The Sims is one of my favorite games. I've been playing The Sims since I was a kid, since The Sims 2. Um, Professor Strangefinger says it could be really amusing if they do it with a sense of whimsy. That's what I'm saying. They have to do this with a sense of whimsy. I want them to build um, Pleasantville. I want them to build that entire city like they did with Barbie Village. I want it to look surreal. I want it to be surreal. I want it to be like The Sims. I want it to be like The Sims, but in a movie form. That's what I want. That's how they made the Barbie land, like, the most pink, idealized version of a live-action Barbie land that they could. I want them to do the same, but for The Sims. Like, recreate that entire town, have it be super surreal and super fake and plastic or whatever. I, I just really want it to be like, like Barbie and how it looks visually and how they build the sets and everything. I really want this to be a tactile thing that everyone's living in. That's what I want so super, super badly. Uh, Margaret Robbie's a great producer. I think she really has her, her finger on the pulse of what people want. Um, and that, that's going to really set her far in her career. I really think she's super smart as a producer. Um... Rodney Dollar says, so Barbie Left Barbie Land is now joining Sunset Valley after having therapy. I mean, sort of. I mean, in a way, this kind of could be a sequel. They're, they're very similar. Um, Folklore Corner says that one mod where you can grill a baby. There's a mod where you can grill a baby? I mean, I'm not surprised. There's a mod for everything, but that sounds awful. But that's the kind of thing I want them to include in this movie, though. You gotta include the weird stuff, because that's what makes The Sims The Sims. Like, if they can't get around a plate, that would make me so happy. Just put a plate on the ground and they have to, like, pretend that they're blocked. That would make me so happy. <laughs> you have no idea. Um, yeah, and have the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper would be cool, too. Maybe we'll find out what happened to Bella Goth and that whole Goth family. I don't know. Could be fun. I'm really looking forward to this, anyway. I think this could be a good one. And with Kate Heron as a director... I think this could be a really big hit potentially because The Sims has a really big fan base. There's an into there's a whole section of YouTube of just people playing The Sims and people watching people play The Sims. That's how big of a fan base this has. So I think The Sims could do pretty well. We'll see. Moving on. Speaking of YouTube, Mr. Beast will recreate the biggest reality contest series ever for Prime Video. The series will feature 1,000 contestants and competing for a $5 million cash prize. Now, Mr. Beast is just taking over YouTube. He's taking over the media industry, it seems like. I mean, good for him. If you guys ever saw what he did for, um, what's it called? Squid Game? Where he did the whole Squid Game series, but for real. He knows how to put together a reality contest. That Squid Game video was super, super interesting and super good. So if he's going to do something like that, but for Prime Video, I'm actually quite interested. Maybe I'll even watch an episode. Who knows? Uh, but I'm, I'm really happy that Mr. Beast is getting all this success, this success. Because whatever doors Mr. Beast opens, he opens for other YouTubers. And so as a YouTuber, I'm like, hey, yes, get the bag, man. So that maybe other YouTubers can get the bag, too. Because the industry has been so stuck-up-ish about YouTubers and not really wanting to acknowledge them as like actual celebrities so it's nice that mr beast is kind of leveling up to like being accepted by the industry because i think again that means a lot for other youtubers like myself so i'm happy for him i want him to be successful he's opening doors for all of us so this is pretty big anyone interested in watching this mr beast series um, Folklore Corner says, I'll be a contestant. I'm broke, not gonna lie. Right? I would like five million dollars. Can I have five million dollars, please? Never watched him, says Five Fruit. All right. Um, yeah, he's paid his dues. That's how I'm feeling. He's paid his dues. Now he's leveling up. Good for him. Um, oh god. Primoplasma says, now we need a Christopher Nolan-directed biopic to go up against The Sims. Wouldn't that be funny if we had Barbenheimer times two? That'd be hilarious. Uh, Brianna says, I have never watched a single video of his, but good for him, I guess. Oh, you guys don't watch Mr. Beast? 
Honestly, I don't really watch him that much because his videos are edited so much, I feel like I can't keep up. Like, he has an edit every two seconds, I swear. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen a couple of his videos. A couple of them are really good. He, he, he has earned his spot, I feel. He's, he's worked pretty hard. Uh, but anyway, moving on. So the Office series is actually still happening. We're getting a new Office series. The series will likely be set in a new office with new characters, but set in the same universe. So we're getting another Office reboot. How do you guys feel about this? I don't know how I feel about it, just because... They, whatever, when they tried to continue The Office without Michael Scott, the show really took a nosedive in quality. So I kind of feel like, I don't know, Michael was a huge part of that show and why it works so much. Without him, I just don't know if The Office is going to, is going to work as well. But what do you guys think? I know the show is super popular. A lot of people love this show. I really like this show. I binge-watched the entire thing several years ago, so I've seen every episode. Um, but I'm just not sure if a reboot of the show is going to bring back the same magic because I feel like it was that specific cast that really did what that show did. Um, and I just don't know if without that cast, if, if this reboot is really going to do any numbers. But I'm very curious. Are you guys going to be watching this rebooted Office series? Are you guys interested in it at all? Um, Natanya's a no. Rodney's a no. Piranha's a no. High Sam's a no. Danielle's sick of reboots. Um, oh no, it seems like majority of you are saying no. Like, no at all. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna try it just because I am a fan of The Office. I like the show. I have no idea if this new show is going to be any good, but I'm at least going to try it. I just don't know if it's going to be good because we all w saw what happened when Michael Scott left. And the show wasn't as good, so without anyone there, I just don't know if the, it, this has any potential of being good at all, to be honest. Um, yeah, The Office is the crazy boss, exactly. Without the crazy boss, what are you going to do with the show? I don't know. Um, seems like most of you guys are feeling nope. Yeah, nope is a good, 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 uh, yeah. I don't know what I was saying there. But anyway, I'm still going to try The Office just because I'm curious. Moving on. So, speaking of live-action movies you probably aren't going to watch, we're also getting a live-action Popeye movie, which I think is interesting. I don't know why we're getting a live-action Popeye movie. We don't need a live-action everything. This would have been better just animated, or maybe better not being made at all. This is such an old old cartoon, the Popeye series. I just don't know if this is something that has the cultural cachet that it used to. I just don't know if this is something that's going to be like an actual hit or not. I'm thinking no. I'm thinking no. Just because the Popeye's cartoon is so old at this point, I just don't think it has the cultural relevancy that it used to. But what do you guys think? And do you think this needs to be live action? Sorry. Um, apologize. Do you think this needs to be live action? I, I honestly feel like this should have just stayed animated. Not Daniel says not watching that either. Uh, yeah, seeing a lot of no's. A lot of no's. Uh, nobody cares about the spinach eating sailor. <laughs> I know, right? The whole thing about eating your spinach so you get strong. I mean, that's very true. You should eat your greens and all that. But like... I'm sorry, but no one talks about that kind of stuff anymore. That's, that even seems like an old school thing to promote, you know? Like, you don't see cartoons promoting eating spinach and greens anymore. Even that kind of seems old school. Um, live action is not needed, I fully agree. He looks like the guy from The Hunger Games. What? Who are you talking about? <laughs> um, yeah, stop Popeye stayed in the past. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, oh yeah, we already have a Robin Williams Popeye movie, so I don't know about this. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm saying this is going to be a flop. Who knows, maybe we'll get a good director and a good actor to play the part, I don't know. But I, as of right now, I'm thinking this is probably going to be a flop. Um, now, speaking of things that I think could be a flop, so Aaron Taylor Johnson is ru rumored to have been offered the role of James Bond. Now, I've only seen Aaron Taylor Johnson in a couple of things. Like, I saw him in Bullet Train. That's probably the main thing that I've seen him in. Obviously, I saw him in Marvel, but he was only in that briefly. Um, he's an okay actor. I think he's fine. Do I see him as James Bond, though? No. 
he does not have the suaveness and sophisticatedness that I think Bond is supposed to have. So this is a very different Bond that they're going with. I'm not sure if I'm interested in this Bond. Um, he's too much of like a rough kind of guy. I feel like Bond is supposed to be very smooth and suave. And Aaron Taylor Johnson is like burly and manly and musky. And I feel like that is just not who Bond is unless they're trying to change the character a bit. Which makes me think that they are changing the character because he's so different from the other previous Bonds. Um, but I don't know what they could be going for. Are they going for more of an approachable Bond? Are they going for more of a laid-back Bond? Because that's how I, that's the vibe I get from Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Do you guys see him as a good Bond? I just, I'm just not seeing it. Rock, paper, scissors says, I could see him as Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh my god, rock, paper, scissors, stop! <laughs> oh my god, you guys are being so mean! Oh, I was trying to be nice. Red Banana Green says he looks greasy. Take a shower. Oh my god. Hidden Name says he might shave his beard. I mean, even if he shaved his beard, it's it's, it's more it's about the vibe, not just his looks. Um Brianna does art says, I'm still mad they didn't cast Idris Elba as James Bond. I think he's too old for the role. I really do think he's too old. Um, Primoplasma says, no, he doesn't look suave enough to play Bond. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't look swan at all. Swan. He doesn't look suave at all. Um, he's, he's very much giving every man, and Bond has never been an every man. Um, oh my god, Primoplasma! He looks like someone who owes me $50. <laughs> You guys are being so savage against him. My God. You're not wrong, though. I know, rock, paper, scissors. Why are you pointing out all of my wrong words today? I don't appreciate it. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not getting Bond vibes from him at all. Not at all. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe if we see him on camera, he might convince us. But he's giving every man. He's giving Bob the Builder. He's not giving Bond He's just not, not at all. Um, that's my opinion, though. <laughs> Moving on. So, like I said, I will be covering Ghostbusters Frozen Empire this Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And unfortunately, the reviews have not been very good. Like, they've been bad. Like, it's at 44% right now. And according to Discussing Film, this, the film sadly resorts to jingling keys in front of an audience for two hours instead of telling a fresh story. Now, here's the thing. I thought the first Ghostbusters, meaning the first one of this new rebooted series, the last one, I thought it was okay, but I also thought it was a bunch of nostalgia bait. For someone who has no nostalgia for Ghostbusters at all, I felt like the, the last movie was a bunch of nostalgia bait. So if this movie is being critiqued for being just more nostalgia bait, I don't know if I'm going to care for it. I'm seeing it because the person I'm seeing it with really wants to see it, and also because I'm reviewing it for the channel. But to be honest, I don't really care about this movie. <laughs> and I probably wouldn't be seeing it if, if it weren't for the person I'm going with, plus the fact that you guys probably want me to review this. Uh, but the fact that the reviews are bad is not promising. Not promising at all. But we'll see. We'll see how I feel about it. Anyone going to see this movie this weekend? Anyone excited for Ghostbusters, yes or no? Um, Ghostbusters is a tired franchise. Yeah, I feel the same way about Ghostbusters as I do Terminator and Aliens. It's just an old, it's a, it's a franchise that had its time, but we keep dragging it out past its expiration date, and I think it just needs to stop. Um, Professor Strangefinger says, I hope that you like it, Brittany. Movie going is pricey. That's why I have a AMC A-list, because if I didn't have that, I would not be able to afford going to the movies as much as I do. Um, you haven't liked a Ghostbusters movie in a while? Yeah, I feel like most people feel that way. Folklore Corner says you'll watch it on streaming. Yeah, going back to the beginning of the, the stream, most of you are probably just going to watch it on streaming anyway. Um, never seen a single Ghostbusters movie. That's fair. Uh, didn't know about it until now. Yeah, I don't feel like the marketing has been very good for this film. Like, I go to the theater all the time, and I feel like I haven't seen the trailer for this that much, you know? Anyway, I do have some WTF news. Let's go to that. 
So the WTF news, it's about the Kate drama. Have you guys been following the Kate drama, the Kate Middleton drama? I truly think that woman is not okay or missing or possibly in a coma or dead because everything that they're they're releasing about this woman just looks more and more fishy. Like you guys know that TMZ video that, that they released of Kate Middleton and William walking? Well now the people from TMZ are like, actually we're not sure if that was actually Will or Kate, if that was just a lookalike. And to me, those look like lookalikes. Like that did not look like Kate Middleton at all to me. Like at all. Um, in that image, if you guys have seen the image. Are you guys following the Kate Middleton stuff at all? I haven't talked about it, but like I really feel like that was a look-alike in that TMZ video, and now I feel like there's something wrong with Kate Middleton. This Kate Middleton stuff is so fishy to me. It's so fishy. Oh, Anna Bear thinks she got a BBL. Okay. Um, Joshua Munn says, I have free tickets and my mom wants to see Ghostbusters, so why not? Well, I hope you will enjoy Ghostbusters, Joshua. I hope that she's okay. I know. It's just crazy to me that, like, they have a video of them walking and people still don't even believe it's her. Like, people actually think it's a body double. And it could be because that's how shady the, the royal palace has been about this whole thing. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Where is Kate? It's kind of crazy to me. I think that woman is not okay and I'm a little concerned now. Uh, but anyway, that was my WTF news for the day. That was it. You guys got to see a lot of Prancer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry you kind of took over the entire stream today. Uh, but I'll see you guys on Sunday. We're going to talk about Ghostbusters. It's going to be a review. So I'll see you then. Thank you all for coming to my show. I really appreciate you guys.